So this keynote in this panel is about Montpellier. I don't know if you guys know Montpellier city. Maybe people watching on the internet don't. It's a beautiful city in the south of France. The climate is actually pretty cool and nice all year through, uh, which has not been the case around. So you guys are lucky ones. Um, it's one of the first smart city project in France, and we're very happy to have them in here today. And the overall goal of this smart city project has been to invent urban services, new urban services, while stimulating innovation in the community with all the stakeholders. So we will discover in this morning uh, panel how through partnerships and ecosystem one can build a sustainable city including all the stakeholders, namely the citizens, the public authorities, the enterprises, the startups, the academics. So for this panel, I'm very happy to welcome uh, our guest speakers. So first, we have Francois Gross, Senior Vice President, Digital Services, Veolia Environment. Francois, would you mind just saying a few words about Veolia and what you're doing? Uh, well, Veolia Environment is a leading uh, company uh, in water management, uh, waste management, energy management, and mobility. Uh, so we operate uh, all around, uh, around the world, uh, 300,000 employees, so big firm, yeah. in operations. And I'm in charge of developing a, a new kind of services based on uh, the use of uh, urban data. Okay, great. Uh, we have Philippe Sajo, Vice President, Smarter Cities, IBM France. So Philippe, uh, would you mind saying a few words about, well, kind of everybody knows IBM, don't we? But like the Smarter Cities activities of IBM, which is quite important and interesting today. Yes, yeah, so good morning, so I don't know if you, if you are well, okay. Uh, so in fact, we, we, we catch up the, the, the movement of Smarter City three years ago. So currently we have <coughs> 3,000 engagement with the city over the globe, and, and clearly uh, that is around, around the data and the fact to, to work with uh, real-time data, big data issues, and, and give prediction for new usage. And that is around uh, deal with the data, which is really our, our job since uh, 100 years. OK, thank you very much. Uh, and then, and for the English speakers, uh, you'll enjoy a bit of French this morning. This is an international conference. So this is your French learning session now. Uh, and I'm very happy to welcome Michel Aslanian, uh, Vice President Innovation of Montpellier Agglomeration, which is, well, agglomeration is pretty much a metro what we, you would call a metro in the US, uh, and it's a big area around uh, a city. Bienvenue, uh, Michel. Uh, je vais vous laisser vous présenter. Et dans un premier temps... Welcome, uh, Jean-Michel. And uh, during a first stage, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and tell us about this eco-city uh, project, the ambitions that uh, uh, you are supporting through this project, and maybe more practi practically how you think this project is going to unfold uh, through time and uh, what is the role of IBM and Veolia. Yes, sir, I will uh, do this with pleasure. I'm sorry, my English is not good enough uh, for me uh, to express myself in English. My name is uh, Michel Aslanian, and I'm uh, much more handsome than Gilbert Pastor, who was uh, um, supposed to turn up here. Et donc, je suis vice-président délégué à l'innovation. I am the vice chair respons responsible for innovation, and uh, this uh, is um, very telling because when I was appointed, it was the first time someone was in charge of innovation, which shows the importance that took this very notion. Uh, so. Uh, uh, the uh, urban area of uh, Montpellier and the smart city project is such uh, that you have to keep in mind that Montpellier is a, a land of innovation. Um, the uh, various uh, uh, political players who uh, played a role either at the town council or uh, within local authorities always uh, went for innovation. One uh, of um, uh, innovators got a, a big uh, world uh, prize a, a couple of years ago. 
Uh, we welcome 1,500 people, new people every uh, month. Uh, so this is a, a developing territory, but it also represents uh, problems, of course. But we're lucky enough uh, to have uh, territories that are still not built on as Montpellier uh, used to be quite uh, an agricultural area. So we are lucky enough to have uh, the uh, possibility to expand, to welcome these new inhabitants and to find a job for them and, and uh, accommodation. And the third point, which is a uh, uh, very important. We've always worked with IBM. They've uh, been operating in our area for a long time, and every time we managed to innovate together, uh, we did it. So we got the Eco City um, branding for a territory which is huge. It starts from uh, the the heart of Montpellier, that is a very old uh, heart uh, with uh, buildings that date back to the 13th century and spreads all the way to the sea with uh, territories which are still being built on. And in the four, five years to come, we're going to have the new high-speed train line, a new highway, an airport that's going to get bigger. And we thought that was uh, really relevant uh, to think uh, the uh, design of this new territory, uh, including uh, the notion of a smart city. But what is key here is to put the citizen back at the heart of the city. Et deuxièmement, il nous a... The second thing is that we thought it was crucial to think about digital development or smart cities uh, so that they would be the driver of economic development in the future. We have worked together with um, IBM. We signed in December 2012 a, re a research and development contract with Montpellier Universities, with IBM. Uh, the uh, IDAT, which is uh, uh, an institute, uh, small uh, and local companies, as we go and develop uh, uh, projects, uh, it is essential to involve startups and small and medium sized companies. It is an essential part of the economic development. And we are uh, on a research and development uh, project. We want to be at the cutting edge of technology and to make sure that it's going to be a driver uh, and uh, something to attract companies. And uh, it is, in fact, extremely difficult to communicate with citizens on something that you don't know is going to become. We're talking about including the citizens, we're talking about including all the stakeholders and the complexity of such an R&D project, uh, research and development project, you said, uh, in this sort of brand new and old at the same time environment. So, uh, Philippe, maybe you could give us a bit more of insight of what has been done within the city, how did you work, what the various ecosystem partners brought in and what are the, obje the objective and the benefits for all the stakeholders. Okay, so, so in complement of what, uh, what Michel Aslanian just said, uh, uh, so effectively it's a research and development program and IBM bring software uh, specialists uh, and, and part of research. The purpose is really to improve the life of the people, to reduce uh, the cost of specific services and to create new usage, leveraging all uh, the startup and, and small enterprise which are on the territory. So that is really the objective. We decided to make this uh, contractual shape of research and development rather to make uh, another consulting approach with conclusion and then send the RFP, so and so forth, <coughs> because we, we consider that we, we don't know exactly what we are looking, both in technology and economic model. And, and, and rather, again, to make another study, we decided to go, to work, learn in working, and, and, and progressing. What is really important to understand on that is IBM is putting 
uh, this uh, intelligence operation center platform, who make, which is a real-time and predictive platform, uh, who can correlate the data, and, and the purpose is really to, to get above the silo we have currently about transport, about water, about risk, and the linkage with social media and the citizens to be part of the, of the story. So, five principles, very, very simple, but I, I read to be sure that <coughs> I, I don't forget. Each partner is uh, in charge of the quality of the data. So we don't replace Veolia for the water who, who will deliver the data from, from the metering. We just collect, clean, uh, formalize, and then put to the, to the territory. The data property is really by the public authority who decided to invest in this project to get back the property of the data to be able to give to the company who wants to produce something. Uh, the data are free for, uh, from any economic right, uh, and IBM doesn't replace the vertical actors. We are just here to help to consolidate the data, again, clean shape, and, and be available for, for the territory. And that is really a, a noble, an open lab, uh, very close to what you explained about London. And I will uh, come back perhaps later about what we are doing with a small company incubator. Okay, thank you, Philippe. <coughs> uh, just one question to you. So, um, and, and <laughs> that's a necessary one. Uh, how is it financed? What's the financing? Oh, it's very simple, very simple. And I'll come back to Francois very because simple. I have a question for Francois. The, 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 the authority, so what we call Montpellier Agglomération County, I don't know exactly which is the, the, the English word, vote 4 million euros. 4 million euros, that is real That's money. an investment. Yes, and, and we bring value, uh, which is also sized, uh, uh, with software, with resource, and that is really the starting point. Then, probably some partner, and, and, and I hope that Friday morning we will sign a next step, and Veolia will be a new partner entering uh, in, in this game. Okay, so Francois, uh, you're, you're heading digital services at Veolia. Uh, so you have an, a global agreement with, with IBM. We understand from this conversation that IBM in this project, but also in many other projects, is collecting real-time data, cleaning them. But from an operator standpoint, uh, in this global partnership, but might be in this project or, or the one, um, how do you use those, those data? I mean, what kind of services are you trying to provide? And what are the business or project obstacles, hurdles, uh, and especially we touched upon in the previous panel on the business models. So can you tell us a little bit how, as an operator, uh, using the data collected by IBM, in that case, and owned by uh, Montpellier Agglomeration, you would work uh, <coughs> in this situation? Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, we will work on, uh, first, uh, this uh, smart city uh, story is a new story for Veolia, uh, as well, I think, for, as for uh, everybody. Uh, and uh, we will work on it at uh, several levels. First, uh, as an operator, uh, because, of course, uh, we uh, already leverage uh, the potential of uh, technology within our operations to improve the customer management or to improve uh, operation efficiency. Uh, that's uh, the point of view of uh, coming into the partnership uh, in Montpellier, for example. We operate the water and wastewater management uh, in uh, the city of Montpellier, and next Friday we will sign uh, the contract on the water chapter of the uh, okay. big program as okay. an operator, together with the city, with IBM, and also with uh, M2O City, which is a, sub, uh, a subsidiary of Veolia, uh, dealing with smart metering. So it means actually the data will not be collected by IBM, but by Veolia actually. Okay. But then treated by uh, IBM. So my friend at Green Bees, you have your first business announcements in this conference. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's the first level, but the real question uh, in new services is uh, dealing with the data uh, without being an operator of the city. Okay. And uh, there, uh, our uh, diagnosis is that uh, right now, the, the, uh, w the wonderful use of technology uh, in a smart city is not questionable. The question is, uh, how do you finance it yep. beyond an experiment? Yep. And if you want to upscale the story. Yep. And well, there, the question... Where is uh, the value and how do exactly. you capture it? Exactly. 
uh, we think that uh, it's first the question is most in most cases not yet answered and uh, then uh, we think that we are at the sweet spot of this story because we think that uh, one part of this value uh, lay, uh, um, lies uh, at the crossing of data management and real world operation okay. let me take an example which is not a data management example. Uh, last year, we signed a contract uh, with the Water Organization of New York City, together with McKinsey, the advisory firm. And it's a three-year contract where we leverage your experience of water management to help the Water Organization of New York City to optimize uh, and uh, save costs. The target, target is to reduce the uh, cost by uh, 130 million uh, dollars per year and uh, or, uh, um, we, we, are, we are paid in proportion to, to the savings. Yes, the idea here is to do the same using one uh, or experience but also uh, data management and uh, smart city uh, solutions. Okay, so definitely uh, digital services and the partnerships you're having are helping on the efficiency side. Is there any other side like consumer engagement or I know you have some like this Urban Pulse uh, product or uh, apps you, you, you're providing <coughs> also? Because uh, it's interesting that the operation is, uh, is improved, the efficiency of the operation is improved, but also what are the benefits for the citizen and the stakeholders of the city? Of course, we'll come back to the innovation part mm -hmm. later on, but from Veolia Global, actor standpoint, what about this sort of collaborative consumers or collaborative citizens approach mm -hmm. uh, we can think of in a project su such as Montpellier? Well, uh, in our opinion, uh, an, an approach, a B2B approach such as uh, the one I described uh, is just one part of a, a bigger story, which is uh, an open uh, ecosystem story uh, in partnership with the city. Uh, there, are, there will be, uh, the, the beauty of the data is uh, that it can be used several times, as many times as you want, and uh, it can be used for several purposes. So one can be B2B model such as the one I described, but also in, uh, on top of that, we can of, of course improve, as I said, customer relationships and so on. We can also uh, develop approach, B2C approaches, uh, independent from uh, our operations. For example, you, you mentioned uh, Urban Pulse. Urban Pulse is an approach, uh, is uh, an application, a mobile uh, ap application for uh, people moving into, uh, in the city. Uh, it has been developed uh, already in Paris, uh, in many cities of France, in New York City, in New Orleans, and uh, we have uh, uh, an ambitious program of development uh, in uh, France, Europe, and uh, Northern America. And uh, in that case, uh, we don't think that it is uh, a business model for Veolia. So it is a business model based on, uh, it is a commercial business model, okay. but, uh, of course. We, uh, we partner with uh, uh, internet sites, and, but in a contextualized uh, okay. environment. So in that case, we will spin off the activity, the okay. business. We are in the process to spin off the process right. and keep a partnership because we want to leverage that uh, for the city, for... Uh, for your customers. Exactly. Okay, uh, very good. I think it gives like uh, a good overview on where are, uh, where is the value created, how to capture it. Uh, but let's go back a little bit. Let's rewind on this innovation project. Uh, so, uh, M M Michel and, and Philippe, uh, in French, if you will, uh, uh, can, can you speak or Pouvez-vous nous parler de la structure de l'écosystème Can you speak about the structure of the ecosystems for startups, but also for citizens? These cities uh, are in the research and development labs. Uh, so you've got data capture uh, systems that IBM is implementing. But how do you involve other stakeholders? Have you noted, Michel, the academic importance of Montpellier, uh, startups, uh, incubators? Uh, uh, how can you involve them? Very, si very simply, at the principle. Uh, so last week, it was really recent because before it was, uh, it was not able to, to share all of the startup and, and small enterprise because we didn't have anything to show. Eh? We started the project in January. So last week, we went to the Cap Omega, who is one of the key incubators uh, in Montpellier, 
uh, about, uh, the, about technology, information and communication. And we invited the, the small company who wants to come to, to listen what we can propose. So we had uh, 40 companies coming. Uh, and, and we show what we are, uh, what we are uh, working and, and preparing to, to give to them. And because, again, the decision from, uh, from Montpellier County is really to invest money to be able to transform the rough data to clean data, able to take for new usage. That is really important when you talk about obstacle. At the moment, somebody has to put money. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and then uh, this company so we, uh, will be, if they want to take the data to make new usage on transport, on, on citizens' help, and, and so on and so forth. So we, we, they will sign uh, a contract, a convention, with the public authority. Uh, this convention will give to them the right to use the data. They will not own it, they will use the data. And, and so we show them what kind of data they, they will have. We put in place a contest. Uh, and this contest, we say to them, OK, the, the best proposal uh, will be taken with a price. But more important, we will associate to you in the project uh, to work on the data and produce the data. So it's like hackathon, as we've heard a lot and, about. And, and, and frankly, we were very happy uh, of the feedback of this company, who was, OK, at the beginning, they was really uh, suspected. Uh, they say, OK, IBM, uh, big brother, big company, they will take all, uh, nothing for us. And they was quite surprised that we said, all is open. We will give you the web services. You can work on the data. And that is really your game now. Okay. And, and, and when they say, wait, it's money, I say, OK, perhaps there is some uh, funding from the government. There, were, there was a lot uh, around all that. But the game is really to build for you your business model. Huh? And otherwise, there is no, no, no business. Yeah. And perhaps, Michel, you can. Oui, je vais rajouter en français. Euh, L'un des principaux obstacles qu'on a eu à, à lever, euh, c'est que. One of the main obstacles that we had to lift is that we don't have the same culture in France. When you gather public authorities, uh, academic people, research centers, small entrepreneurs, you have a, a number of obstacles that you need to overcome. You need to create trust uh, and working together. But all the people around the table, and I know it because I was part of the pilot committee, all the people around the table are aware that they are part of an adventure, a completely innovative adventure. So it helps tremendously in bridging gaps. So when you start communicate, uh, communicating with uh, uh, others, uh, well, we see that the people from Montpellier are taking ownership of that idea. And they send messages and they say, oh, well, what you do on water and transportation is fine. But when will you tackle health? Because uh, health is a very important thing, too. When will you do something about energy? So all these questions, uh, that feedback, shows that uh, the project is only a, a start point, And there will be a multitude of new projects as we go along. Because citizens got aware that, uh, well, the, the, the metro authorities were doing something with their data, all of a sudden they want them to do more. And this is a true example of consumer engagement. And the other point you, I really like you mention is that it's not, about, it's not only about technical, it's not only about rolling out networks of sensors and collecting data and cleaning data, even though this is hugely important, but it's also about having stakeholders step out of their comfort zone and understand the other parties within the project. Uh, but definitely, and we have like four or five minutes to go, so I will shortly open the, the, uh, the, the floor, uh, open the, to questions in the floor, but uh, this is a, for me, this is a living proof that those smart city, eco cities project are well on track. Those small city projects can exist, can be done, whereas in some uh, instances we have seen people doubtful about it or that was a bit of too much research, research paper. So just to conclude on those points, uh, Philippe and Francois, yeah. so how do you see those smart cities, market, and opportunities growing uh, further I mean, in the months and the years down the road? Uh, so, so, so frankly, uh, 
uh, it's not a marketing uh, world, okay? And and we can somebody can 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 doubt or ask a question on that. We are really in a fundamental movement, just because we have a, a, a huge organization and, and we can read the data everywhere. The fact to work on the data is now available, so we can create something new. Uh, last week, uh, we, we signed with Nice, uh, which is another metropole, uh, in, the, in the same spirit about uh, cut the silo, put the energy, put the data, integrate small enterprise on the territory. So I think it's a real market. And the fact to, to, to enter with, uh, with Montpellier, and frankly, the, the president of Montpellier Agglomération, Jean-Pierre Mot, was really had a good vision of that, uh, to invest on that and said, in going in research and development, we take the time. The problem is to take the time for having, as, as said Michel, all the people coming in, in the bus. Uh, otherwise, uh, if we just make a study, uh, and there was a study just here, huh? but if we make a study, I think it's not sufficient to have the, the, the adoption of the citizen, <coughs> which is key. Francois, um, word of perspective for you on those projects yes. as an operator and digital services. Well, I, I agree with what we said. Uh, we, we think that something big, uh, should come out uh, of uh, all this story. Uh, we, we know that, that we don't know what exactly, so we have to be uh, extremely uh, open uh, in the way we work on it and we try to do at several levels, several kind of partnerships. We have a global partnership with IBM, but we have also partnerships with small firm. And uh, as an example of the diversity of uh, programs or projects or services we, we are working on, it, on uh, I want to mention uh, maybe one of the most promising, I think, uh, which is a program called uh, Four City and which is uh, 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 an approach uh, based on uh, uh, systemic, uh, system, uh, complex system modeling. Yeah. We consider the city as a complex system and we try to, to uh, look at its futures <laughs> with an S, yeah. uh, including uh, loops, uh, including uh, rebound effects and so on, okay. to advise... Like system uh, dynamics approach. Exactly, to, to advise uh, the, the uh, public authority and the investors in the city uh, in the planning of uh, public policies and investment, ex expansion of a city, for example, and so on. And for example, I think it's a promising project. We signed uh, two weeks ago uh, a contract with the city of Singapore and uh, together with EDF, the, the big uh, French power company. And we are working on a big project also in the city of Lyon. And we have uh, advanced discussions with Mexico City. So I, I think, and this is one of the spin-offs I mentioned uh, before, meaning uh, Veolia don't think they will remain alone at the steering wheel of this. We will open and finance it uh, outside. So, see, ecosystems are creating a lot of value. So, we're running a little late. This is 50 seconds uh, left, <laughs> but we're going to extend it a little bit. Questions in the back. Yes, sir. Thank you, Animesh Patek from Inria of Paris. Uh, this is a very nice city uh, project. I hope it comes to Paris soon. That will be nice. Uh, but in terms of citizen participation, I'm curious to know which part of this data, or if you are actually using data generated by people directly, if you have smartphone apps or something that people are using to directly report about some things or ask about what's happening in the city. Thank okay. you. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so uh, uh, the the the. Intelligent platform we, we put in place in Montpellier are in fact two, two uh, parts of the, the application able to, to interact with the population. Well, one is called city col citizen collaboration, so w which is a smartphone application where the people can capture anything as picture and for example, if you are not happy, we, we have, you have a hole face to your house, you put a picture and you send to the city. After that, the city has to take care. That is another story. But so, so we have this, this process, uh, citizen collaboration, and we, we, why, why we do that, except for this specific issue, is really because we are thinking that uh, all the data coming from the system are not sufficient today. And we want to capture all the data, whatever the kind of data entering in the system. And the interaction of Citoyen is one of them, and we are, we are working currently with Eindhoven to be able to capture in movement all the new data coming. And the second process is 
social media analysis, which also embedded in the platform. And, we, and, and if you, you, you want to discuss more, we, we made a, a study with the Toulouse, Toulouse <coughs> city about that on 1.6 million of data uh, in, the past, in the past year. I, I don't want to no, no. cut it short. Another question, but there will be the break, the coffee break right after, and okay. uh, those gentlemen will be around. Make sure you grab them as they get out. Uh, good morning, Hugh Olderkes from NASA System. Um, thank you for this project and congratulations here. Um, how do you address, and I think it's an issue that's going to come uh, often in uh, smart cities, how do you address what I'm going to call the uh, electoral incertitude? The electoral? In um, basically, what, uh, the, it's in the French? city that is is it's financing the project and uh, yes. how it's a long-term project. How do you uh, address what, uh, what would be the next electoral outcomes? Uh, it, how do you maintain stability in the project? Okay, so what will be next in the project and how the city will address that? I'm, I'm, I'm just sure that was a bit noisy. Or in French? Uh, in the oh, the election. Okay. Yeah. So like the, yeah, okay. I get it. Sorry. Um, so yeah, there will be the elections. Uh, next year, 2014. So for the international public, there will be city hall election, which is a key issue in those projects. So uh, you're elected, obviously. So how is it, comment ce projet va se transformer au-delà de 2014? So what will that project become beyond 2014? Because there will be new elections. Huh? So what I would say, you know, what is the political impact of elections, uh, you know, for a local government? Uh, what impact does it have on these projects? Because these projects go well beyond elections. Well, I hope none. The quasi totality of that for the Montpellier agglomeration in which we have mayors that uh, do not belong to the same political party vote uh, you know, unanimously. Um, we all understand that this is a project terribly important for the territory, exactly like the tramway was. And it was one of the biggest projects for Montpellier. So uh, elected people, I mean, local councillors, uh, no matter which party they come from, are completely committed to that. It goes well beyond political parties. Uh, we work, you know, with uh, the right wing, the left wing, but we are all convinced that the only way to go beyond, especially in that context of crisis, is to go beyond political barriers. Uh, I mean, we talk about millions of euros, and uh, we had a unanimous vote for that project. So it is quite independent from political parties.